electric cars work? Hi, my name's Chris. I work at General Motors. I'm going to tell you about how electric cars move, and I'm going to show you how to make a motor just like the ones that make electric cars go so fast. First, I want to tell you about what a propulsion system is. A propulsion system is a set of parts in a car that make it move. In a gas-powered car, you have an engine. The engine takes fuel from your gas tank and converts it to mechanical power or motion. In an electric car, instead of a gas tank, you have a big battery that, instead of gas, you fill up with electricity from the wall. And instead of an engine, you have an electric motor. That electric motor converts electricity into mechanical power or motion. And similar to the engine, it connects to gears that connect to shafts and spin the wheels to make the car go. Here's an example of an electric motor. An electric motor works by taking electricity from a battery and turning it into me mechanical power or motion. What's happening here is electricity is flowing through the wires and into a coil that's inside the motor. That coil, it creates a magnetic field that pushes against other magnets that are in the motor, making it spin. In an electric car, we use a motor like this, and we connect it to gears. The motor spins the gears, which is able to turn the shafts that turn the wheels. Electric motors aren't just in electric cars, though. No, they're all around us. They're in everything from appliances to toys, even in gas-powered cars. There can be over 100 electric motors to power things like windows, windshield wipers, pumps, or move your seats. Put your ear in your refrigerator. If you hear it hum, then you might be hearing an electric motor spinning the compressor that makes the fridge cold. Next, I'm going to introduce you to my daughters, and they're going to help us play a game. Come on over here, girls. Okay, can you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Parker. Hi, Parker. Can Hi, you introduce Tegan. yourself? Tegan. All right. Okay, girls, here's the game we're going to play. I'm going to show you different things from around the house, and you're going to tell me if it has an electric motor in it or not. Make sure you play at home. Does this car have an electric motor in it? No. No, no it doesn't. You have to push the car yourself, right? Does this remote control car have an electric motor in it? Yes. Yes. Yes, we can press the button and a battery powers it with an electric motor. Does this blender have an electric motor in it? Yes. Yes, the, the electric motor spins the blades to blend things. Does this dog have an electric motor in it? Yes. Yes, the motor is what makes the dog move. It moves its head and spins around. <sighs> What about this dog? Does this dog have a motor in it? No! No, that's not a motor, that's Lulu! Oh, great job, girls. Thank you so much for helping out. You're welcome. Can you say bye? Bye. Okay. Our next activity is a little more advanced. We're going to build an electric motor. So here's what you need. First, this activity needs to be done with adult supervision. Make sure to wear safety glasses and gloves so that we can be as safe as possible. So we're gonna be working with magnets and parts that move. Okay, so what you need for this experiment is a AA battery, strong magnet. This magnet is called a neodymium magnet. You might have to order this, but it's a very strong type of magnet, just like the ones we use in electric motors. And then you need a piece of copper wire, about seven inches long. Uh, this wire is 14 gauge wire, just like the kind we used in house wiring, but you can use a thinner 18 gauge wire as well. And finally you need Pliers. Pliers are to bend the wire. So, first, stack the battery on top of the magnets. Next, we need to bend the wire into an M shape using the pliers. We need a 
piece of wire here about seven inches long. And what we want to do with it is bend it into the shape of an M. And the reason we're doing that is we want a point at the top of the wire to balance on the top of the battery. And then we want to have two sides of the wire come down so that they can touch the sides of the battery. Where the magnets stand. Okay, and then from there, we want to bend the bottom of the wire so that it's wrapping around the magnets. Okay. It might take a few tries, some trial and error, to get it just right because we basically want it just barely touching. But in the end, you should have something that looks like this. And all you need to do then is to place the oil on top of the battery. And there you have it, an electric motor. The key to making an electric motor work is using magnetic forces. If you have some toy magnets at home, you can experiment with this. When you push two magnets together, they either pull each other or push each other away. Each magnet has a north pole and a south pole. If a north and south pole are facing each other, they pull on each other. If you flip one magnet around and two north poles or two south poles are facing each other, then they push on each other. That's magnetic force, and that's the same force that's making our motor move. Here in this motor that we built, the copper wire that we bent is acting as our coil. Electricity is flowing from the top of the battery down to the bottom of the battery. And as that electricity flows, it makes a magnetic field and pushes against the magnets that the battery is sitting on top of, causing it to spin. In an electric car, we use these same principles. We have an electric motor that's powered by a battery. The battery spins gears. We also have special electronics to control how much power is going out of the battery and into the motor and how fast we charge the battery. All those pieces together are what's called a propulsion system. My job at General Motors is to help design the propulsion system for our next generation of electric vehicles. We work to make the system as efficient as possible while also able to support a large variety of vehicle types and at the same time powerful enough to make the vehicles fun to drive. I'm really looking forward to what we're working on, as well as General Motors' vision of a zero emissions future. Thanks for joining today. I hope you enjoyed the video and the activity, and make sure you stay tuned for our next module.